Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 8.0, and today is day 42. So yesterday we started in on our training of the designs applet where we created an animated video. Today we're going to continue that training in designs where we will create a print based asset. So we're going to dive in to designs and start showing you the basics of designing, excuse the pun, actual assets for print based media. So we're going to click on our paintbrush icon, the designs icon here on the left hand side. We're going to create a new design. You can see here inside of our library, we now have the video we created yesterday, but we're going to create a new design today. We're going to go right to left during this series. We're going to choose print and choose next. First thing that happens is we get into our template library. Now these templates are all real estate focused and there's an entire series of categories and subcategories. We're going to come back to auto create in a few days, but let's focus down here on our listings category, buyer category. You can see we've got legion style categories, even business basics and then some additional, maybe even holiday based assets for you as well. There's luxury land, commercial, sports and entertainment collections. So many different assets available inside of the design template library. So I highly recommend come in, spend some time in here, kind of looking through what all is available. We're just gonna start with the first category listings, our first subcategory coming soon. And you can see just inside this library, we have 63 different print style assets that we can utilize and sort of choose from. So you can see as I continue to scroll down, all the templates load. If we go back up to the top, we will see that we have got flyers, eight and a half by 11 vertical. Then we've got trifold, still eight and a half by letter, uh, eight and a half by 11, but sort of built out to be, you know, you can fold them into threes. We've got bifolds, so now we're dealing with 11 by 17 paper. And we've got horizontal and vertical styles here. We've got portrait style postcards, four by six, standard style postcards, six by four. And then we, you can see we've got door hangers as well. Now it starts to bring in some of our social assets. We're not gonna go into those until tomorrow or the next day. But right now we're going to focus on the different styles of print assets. So let's just say we wanted to do a coming soon flyer. Maybe we're going to do some door knocking, etc. I can click on flyers and I'm going to get the nine different templates available. And remember, this is just in the coming soon subcategory. We've got all of these other subcategories available as well to review. Let's start off by just introducing you to this first template. So we're going to click on use for this first coming soon flyer template. And we're gonna get taken into the editor where we can begin to become comfortable and aware of what we can make changes to inside of this template. So this is the WeBrand editor. Um, there's a lot to this. So this may be a two day challenge just introducing the WeBrand editor and uh, what all it has available. To start off, you can see your asset is here in the middle of this screen. Inside your asset, there are some basic key elements that we're going to be working with. So essentially, you're going to have text boxes. So anywhere you can see text, we're going to have text boxes that we can make edits to. We're going to have images, as you can clearly see an image here of a kitchen. We're going to have text, or excuse me, design. So you've got some boxes here, right? A red box here, a red box there. We've got an outline box as well. And then of course, our logo as well for our market center. So to begin making changes to this specific asset, I'm going to simply click on the text box with the address. I'm going to come up here to the top of my screen and I'm going to make sure that I can see this typewriter icon sort of looks like a half opened Hershey bar. I'm going to click on that typewriter icon and now you can see that I can easily come in here and change the address of this particular flyer. 
and I'm going to change that to 2422 Fond Lake Circle, Katy, Texas 77493. You can see because it was a little bit longer than the original address, it wraps to the second line. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come down to this fit plus or minus. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see this flyer a little bit better. If we zoom in on this text box, you can see there are white bars kind of embedded in this blue square. If I click on these bars, I can drag to the right and drag to the left and center that box such that the entire address then shows up. So that's text box number one. I would come down to text box number two. I would wanna make changes for my particular listings, bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage. What price are we gonna go live at and when was it built? I could then come down to this last text box and make sure that I have updated all of the features of the property. And then finally, one more time, I'm gonna come down and change my name, my phone number, my email address, and my consumer app link. Next up, we've got four photos here. So I need to change my headshot, and then I'm gonna change the photos of the listings. If we come over on the left-hand side, you can see the images toolbar is already selected. I want to add an image. I can come in and decide where I want those images to be drawn in from, whether I want to bring in from my Facebook profile, my business pages, my Google Drive, my Dropbox, or just go explore my file explorer here. Now what's really cool with the actual listings of the photo is that the designs asset is connected to the MLS. So I can come over to KWLS and I can search for a KW listing. So we're gonna search for 2422 Fawn Lake Circle. It's gonna go through and ping all of the MLSs and sure enough, here's 2422 Fawn Lake Circle. I'm gonna click on select and a couple things happen. One, it's gonna load all the photos that I previously uploaded to the MLS. And remember when it comes time to bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage, sometimes we forget what year it might be built or the exact square footage. I've also got the listing details being pulled in as well. So if I need to figure out, hey, how big was that house? Oh, that's right, 2,396 square feet. Now back to the photos. This is a photo of a kitchen, but it's not the kitchen of our listing. So if we scroll down on this list of photos, I can come in and actually say, you know what? I want to click on this photo. You can see it's outlined in blue. And I want to replace it with this photo. So if I hover over the circular arrows, I get the opportunity to replace that photo. Now I've got two additional photos down here that I can utilize as well. So maybe we go back and we want to get a, what's another good shot? Here is the wide open living space. So maybe we go with that so you can sort of see the kitchen. Oops, so I made a mistake here, right? So I accidentally just clicked on the photo instead of replaced the photo and it dropped it right in the middle of my flyer. If this happens, you can just highlight the photo and click on delete and it will remove that photo. So we're going to come down to this photo and replace again, circular arrows, that photo with this one. And then maybe we come down and we get a picture of the primary bath. So we're going to replace this third kitchen photo with a photo of the primary bath. There you go. And you can see as you're developing your flyer, you can come through and replace whichever of these images you want to replace and sort of see what the flyer looks like. From there, I want to replace my headshot. If I go back to images and my assets, <clears throat> I'm gonna show you how you can load more photos to the my assets section in a future video, but I've already loaded my headshot. So now I can just replace that image with my headshot. And now let's assume that I have already edited all of my text boxes, my name, contact information, description of the property, details of the property, address of the property. The last thing that I would have to do would be to replace the logo for my market center. So I can come down instead of images, we're gonna scroll down to logos. And you can see that it automatically brings in several assets that I've been preloaded. I'm gonna show you again how to load these in a future video, but let's go and click on the logo. It's now highlighted in blue and we want to replace it with our Market Center logo. We can do that. Now when we look at it, 
it actually goes off of the page. So we're going to need to click and then slowly drag that logo up just a little bit further. I'm going to try and position it here on the right hand corner just so that it's opposite that red box. And then we've got the text box here, which each office independently owned and operated. And I definitely need that. I'm just going to drag that to the right and then drag it sort of down here at the bottom. So it's still in the flyer, definitely required, but now it makes it look just a little bit cleaner. I can click on that logo one more time. Now I'm actually using the up arrows just to get a little more granularity and move that where I want it. So now I have got a flyer completed. We have made updates to our text boxes. We have changed out all of our images. We've changed out our logo. We're pretty much good to go with a basic creation of this flyer right now. Last thing we want to do is title it. That way when we're in our design library in the future, we're gonna know which asset is which. So we're gonna do coming soon, and then I'm just gonna do 2422 Fawn Lake Circle. The design now has a name. Last thing I'm gonna do is choose to download it by clicking on this down arrow inside the box. It's gonna say, how would you like that downloaded? Typically a flyer is gonna be a PDF standard, right? I could also do a PDF for printing since I'm choosing to print this out and use it for door knocking. When I do for printing, it's gonna give us some additional printing guidelines. Hey, do you wanna crop it? If so, how? Important to know that if I'm gonna do it high res printing, that the crop marks may potentially take me outside of what I had on my image. So as long as that's good to go, we're gonna click on download. You can see in the bottom left-hand corner now, my screen, it said downloading going through, and I can click on my download folder now and <clears throat> see this PDF now available. It may not have completely downloaded yet, let's see. There it is, now it's ready to go for me. So I can click to open, and here's that PDF ready to go. I could print this out on a high quality printer and start door knocking it with, them, with it immediately. That's a basic introduction, guys. We've got a lot more to go inside of designs, especially when we start getting into social assets as well. I'm gonna show you how to do postcards and a few other things. That's just the brief introduction, so stay tuned for some more detailed training inside of the designs applet. As always, I hope you're having a fantastic day and I'll look forward to talking to you again real soon.